audience today. Oh, what an honor and a delight to be here with folks from all across the nation. I'm seeing most every state is represented. That's just wonderful. Well, I am truly delighted to be here this morning to talk about uh, making math human, but I have an objection to my very own title. So let me uh, start sharing my screen and talk about why I'm confused about my title to my very own talk. All right, let's see. Hopefully, uh, is everyone sharing this, seeing the screen adequately right now? Just a thumbs up from someone would be grand. Excellent. All right, here it is, making math human. Here's my own objection to my own title. I would actually say math is human. I mean, after all, it's an enterprise that has engaged humankind for oh, thousands and thousands of years. Humans have been uh, creating and inventing mathematics for thousands of years. They've been, been using mathematics. And they've been enjoying mathematics. So mathematics is very much a human enterprise. And let me talk about that today. Math is very human. In fact, you can see probably behind this, this piece of paper, my first statement. So we humans, first of all, are very human. Before I talk about math, let me just talk about our humanness and the language we speak, English. We speak English, at least I'm speaking English right now. And I'm wondering, before I start on the math, have you ever noticed anything weird about the word weird? What's weird about the word weird? Now, I believe we all have access to the chat and I've got my chat window open. What do you notice is weird about weird? Just type into the chat what you notice is weird. Yes, yes, yes. People are saying it should be I before E. That's what I was taught as a kid, I before E. Except after C. There is no C here. So why do I have the I after the E? This is weird. The spelling of weird is weird. Very strange. Us humans, we are very human, even the language we speak. Oh, okay. Uh, I before E, except after C, except for words like neighbor and way. Oh, words that sound like an A sound, but I'm afraid weird doesn't sound like an A sound. Weird is just weird. Very, very strange. In fact, in fact, let me talk about English and math for a moment. For example, when I write a number like 273, uh, let's listen to what I just said. In fact, I'll draw a picture of it first. Let me draw like a place study chart. Here's the ones, here's the tens, here's the hundreds. So when I say 273, I literally say 200, okay? Two of these, two hundreds. Then I say 70, 70, which is a little bit weird. My camera's not fully focused, but let's get my camera to behave. 70, this is a bit weird, but TY is short in English for 10. So we're literally saying seven tens, seven of these, seven tens and three, 273. Okay, there is the number 273. We literally say two hundreds. There they are, seven tens, or we say T and three. Okay, a little bit weird, but not too weird. But let me play with that. Let's go and point something out. For example, if I drew a picture of 263, we would draw six T, six tens. We'd literally draw six tens. Okay, that's fine. I'm, I'm making sense of myself here. Uh, let me keep going. What about 200 and, oh, this one. If English were consistent, what should we say right there for that middle digit? Can you type in the chat what we should say? Not what we do say, what we should say. You're right, we should be saying 5T. We should be saying 5T, but no, English is weird. No, no, James, don't say 5T, you have to say 50. Okay, it's getting weird. What about this one? Is this one weird? This middle digit here? Is there something weird about that one or not? We actually say 40, but you're right. You wouldn't dare write 40. Who in their right mind would write 40 with a U? That's silly, James. Don't be silly. We're meant to write 40. English is weird. What can I say? Oh, let's say I'm having fun. Let's keep going. I get you onto me now. We should be saying 3T, 233, but we don't. We make it 30. We should be saying 202T3. That's what we should be saying, but we don't. We say 223. I agree, Lauren, this is crazy. How about this one? What should we be saying for this one? Oh, oh, interesting. Some people are saying 10T and some people are saying 1T. I actually think it should be 1T. 70, 60, 5T, uh, 40, 3T, 2T, 1T. 
you're right. We should be saying one T. But this one's actually extra weird. Let me focus on this one. We actually say 213. Okay, there's terrible handwriting. So it's also a, a, uh, a lecture on hieroglyphics today. This is what we literally say. If I draw a picture of this, we literally say ones, tens, hundreds, 213. This is what we literally say, 1, 2, 3, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We literally say 213, which is weird. We're technically saying two of these, none of those, and 13 of those. Now, most, most people say, James, 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 you're not allowed to draw more than 10 dots in a box, but you can't draw 10 dots in a box. People say, no, 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 no one does that. Math says, if you've got 10 ones, 10 ones is really the same as 110. You should be writing this, literally 213, which is very confusing because it's not what we say. We say 213. English is weird. This is really hard. Ah, oh, so mathematically, we insist, if you ever got 10 ones, please make it 110. I guess we also say, if we ever have 10 tens, please make them one 100 and so on. Please never draw more than 10 dots in a box in a place of value somewhere. All right, this is really interesting. This is really curious. Oh, actually, while I'm thinking about it, everything's based on tenness. Have you noticed that? We did ones, tens, 10 tens make 100, 10 hundreds make 1,000. Here's a question. Why are we humans obsessed with the number 10 on matters of arithmetic and counting? Why do we like the number 10 so much? Any thoughts on why we like 10? Fingers. We humans are born with these things on the end of our hands, and we think they're really nifty for counting with. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We see this all the time because of our, of our anatomy. We have 10 fingers on the end of our hands. We think 10 is great for counting. In fact, what do we call these individual things at the end of our fingers? We call them digits. And guess what we call the individual symbols in a long number? Each one is called a digit. It's exactly the same word. Digit, digit, digit. And it's not a coincidence. We humans are obsessed with the fingers and thumbs at the end of our hands. We like them so much, we count with them, We've based our whole arithmetic system on tenness. Though, though I should point something out, not all cultures went base 10, like we're using right now. Some cultures went base 20. 20? Where did that come from? What made some humans think 20 was the way to go? What do you think about that? Yeah, yeah. They were thinking fingers, and they also looked down and thinking fingers and toes. Some cultures on this planet went base 20 because of fingers and toes, most likely. And we have vestiges of base 20 to this day. For example, um, I'm Australian, but I'm living in the US. And I have to know there was a very famous uh, president by the name of, name of Abraham Lincoln who gave a very famous address called the Gettysburg Address, which began as follows. He started four score and seven years ago. Whoops, ago, and then on when his address. Four score and seven years ago. Um, how many years ago is that? What number is he saying right there? Yeah, 87, because score is an old word for 20. Abraham Lincoln was actually saying four 20s and seven years ago. He was actually speaking base 20 right then. Whoa, whoa, base 20. Amazing. In fact, there's still vestiges of base 20 in many languages. For example, how do you say um, 87 en Francaise? How do you say it in French? I don't know. I don't speak French. I probably misspelled that. Okay. Yes, yeah, someone's saying in the chat. Chat says, in French say, set. Literally four 20s, like Abraham Lincoln, and seven. French is speaking base 20 still to this day, when they say 87, which is really interesting. In fact, I saw a message, message go by in chat that some languages do very different things. Um, Spanish is a very popular language here. How do you say 87 in Spanish? I don't, speak, I don't speak Spanish at all. 
Is it four twenties and seven or is it eight tens and seven? How do you say? Ochentas siete, I don't speak for it. So is that, oh, that sounds like eight tens to me, eight tens. Okay, Spanish is doing eight tens and seven. French is doing four twenties and seven. 87, what we do is eight tens and seven. What about another language? Does someone know another language? Korean, Swahili, German? Farsi, Italian does eight tens and seven, so Italian is base 10. How about a sort of very different language? I think it's not a... I speak Korean and actually we do say two, 10, three. Five, ten, seven. Yes. And so there has been some research about certain Asian languages why we understand math better because the language is already set in a ten exactly based on format. Of, a lot of the ang uh, Asian languages say it like it is. If you mean one hundred two tens and seven, you'll say one hundred two ten seven. You just literally say it, and you see it. And with an abacus, which is a beautiful visual model of place value, you've got the visuals and the Kinesthetics to go with it as well. Yay, Korean, someone says. Yay, Korean. Interesting. Thai, Thai. Oh, pips, pet, sip, chet. Translate that word for word for me, if you don't mind, Scott. How, what is what is pet, sip, chet, word for word? Is it eight, tens, seven, or is it four, twenties, seven, or something else? Eight, ten, seven. So Thai is doing eight, ten, seven. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Okay. Base tens, what we use. Some cultures use base 20, and we have some vestiges of base 20 still to this day. I should also point out some cultures on this planet also went base 12. Base 12. Now, this is really weird. Why would some cultures go base 12 as humans? Hmm. Okay, okay. Oh, people are noticing lots of different things. All right. Yes, there's a very natural way for us humans to count to 12 on one hand. Here's my one hand. I'll use, use this hand without a ring. Um, we humans have one hand. We've got four very long fingers, naturally broken into three sections each. And we've got this very handy point at the thumb. There's some cultures that count this way on one hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. It's very popular in parts of Asia and parts of India to this day. And you might even have some students that count this way. So people count to 12 on one hand. It's very natural. 12 is very much part of our human anatomy as well. But also, you're right. 12 is a very handy number. I'm seeing lots of people saying different things in uh, the chat. It's a very nice number in everyday life. For example, in everyday life, we often sell things in groups of 12. How many items in a dozen? How many items in a dozen? Why it's... 12, we still buy eggs in a dozen because the number 12 is really handy in everyday life. Because often you might not want to buy a full group of something, you might want to buy like half a dozen eggs, in which case that's nice. That's a nice whole number. That's six eggs. Another common fraction in everyday life is a third. Often you want a third of a dozen of things. Great. A dozen is very nice. A third of uh, 12 is four, a nice whole number. Another common fraction in everyday life is a quarter. These are the basic fractions of everyday life. And guess what? A quarter of the eggs is really nice. This is still another nice whole number. The number 12 is really handy for the basic fractions that come up everyday life. 10 is really awkward. I mean, half of 10 is five. That's not too bad. A third of a 10 is horrible. And a quarter of a 10 is not much better. 10 is really bad for everyday transactions. So that's why you'll notice in everyday life, Often things come in groups of 12, dozens. How many, how many uh, inches in a foot? There are 12 inches in a foot. And someone said, how many hours in a day? Now, think about it. How many hours are in a day? Someone said time to me in the chat. Let's talk about time for a moment. How many hours are in a day? What's the answer? Yes, yes. So there's the confusion. Is it 12 or is it 24? So let's, let's break this down a bit. Let's, let's be our human selves. Go back thousands of years when people first started measuring time. What were the very first clocks people used? What was the first clocks ever invented? Sundials. Sundials. You put a stick in the ground, you have the sun go by, and you watch the shadow move around the stick. That's a sundial. Yes. So sundials only work during the day. So people only used to measure day at hours during daylight. 
And they said, okay, let's make it 12 hours in a day. Actually, the Egyptians did 10 hours in a day, but then they added an early one for, twi for morning, another one for evening. We had those fuzzy hours of, of, of twilight hours. So they ended up with 12 hours in a day. But then mechanical clocks were invented and water clocks were invented. And people said, oh, we're measuring 12 hours in a day. And if we start measuring time at night now with a mechanical clock, you can measure time at night. We might as well do two hours for the night as well. So we had 12 hours of the day, might as well do 12 hours of the night as well. That leaves us today where we measure time all the time, saying, thinking there's 24 hours in a day. But there's 12 hours in an actual piece of daylight because the very first clocks invented were sundials. By the way, in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, the shadow actually moves around the sundial this way. This is why we tend to draw clocks and think motion is, oops, I'm gonna draw it this way, goes this way. That's why we call this clockwise, this direction of turning clockwise. If Australia ruled the roost and sundials were first uh, talked about from Australia, then you'll notice in the Southern Hemisphere, the shadow moves around that way and clockwise, the world will be going, say, that direction's clockwise. Oh, if only Australians could win. But we didn't, we didn't. Northern Hemisphere clocks were the first ones talked about and they went that direction, bingo. 12 hours a day. By the way, someone mentioned in the chat, there's actually uh, some cultures that went base 60, which is looking crazy. Base 60, whoa, whoa. And this is where people really got into astronomy. And the reasons for this, if you look at mathematical history here, it's a little bit confused. Some people say, well, okay, what's a nice base that combines 10, 12, and 20? What's a nice number that combines 10s, 12s, and 20s? Because there's all these cultures doing their different things. And some people thought, oh, 60 is a nice number that incorporates all that. 60 is a multiple of 20, it's a multiple of 12, and it's a multiple of 10. That's the first multiple, it's a multiple of all of those. Also, it ties in very nicely with there being about 360 days in a year. So those Babylonians some 4,000 years ago saw that nice connection. It connects with astronomy in a nice way. But they're actually fully aware that there's 365 and a quarter days a year. So they then knew they had to do some adjustments. Anyhow, some cultures went phase 60, some cultures went phase 12, some cultures went phase 12. I will point one more thing out. Again, how weird English is. Think of our poor young students learning this for the first time. Look at the names of our first 20 numbers. We are base 10, so our whole number system is based on this, the first 10 of them. So we have special names for each of the first 10 numbers, one, two, three, four, five, all these are very special words. But we also think 12, this is very important. We also have special names for those two extra ones. So actually, English has special names for the first 12 numbers because it thinks 12 is still important. It's only after 12 do you go into a system, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. But then when you get to 20, even though we go into a system right there, it stops, we change the system. We never use things like teen again. We say 21, 22, 23, 31, 32, 41, 42. Then we're on a new system after that. So even the names of numbers in English is really hard. It's very organic, it's very human. The human history of 10-ness, the human history of 12-ness, and the human history of 20-ness is all there in the words we have to make our young students in the US have to learn about how we think about numbers. Unlike Korean, there's no clue here about how these numbers work together because they all seem like just different words coming out of nowhere. Math is very, very, very human. Whoa, whoa. But let me keep going, let me keep going. So I was having fun with things like 273 and 223 and 223, oh, like 213. Um, I don't think anyone would ever do this, 223. I mean, I could draw a picture of that. I guess what I'm saying is in a, in a place value chart, here's the ones, here's the tens, here's the hundreds, 200, two of these, please. 12 of these, 12 T, that would be 12 tens, uh, 1, 10, 9, 10, 11, 12, and three. There it is, 212 T, three. I'm even saying it correctly. 200, 12 tens, 12 T, three. Beautiful. Now, people think I'm very strange. So here's my next question. 
what, what number is that really? What number is 223 really? 33. Oh. It's 230. It's 330. <laughs> is it 323? You're right, because we insist apparently no, no, you can't have more than, you can't have uh, 10, 10 tens, because 10 tens would all disappear, I like to say kaboom, disappear, explode away, and become one of those. So it's really 323. Oh, James, don't be strange. You can't say two, you have to say 20. All right, 323. By the way, let me add to the story about how confused English is. Back old English, in old English, around the year 700, people used to say, to 20, that was valid. That was an actual word, 20. Now it had a different form then, but they really did have a word for 12 tens. That was allowed uh, 1300 years ago. They even had a word for 11 11 If you wanted to go buy 11 eggs, you could walk up to someone, say, yes, I would like 11 eggs, please. And that was okay, because they would say, oh, you mean 11 tens, you mean, you mean 110 eggs. Yes, Tolkien also did this too. He brought back the words 11, 10, 20 in the Lord of the Rings. Yes, you can actually do this. So at one time, those words were acceptable. It's just that English is all over the place. And it even changed its mind about 11, 10, 20. At some point it said, no, 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 we wouldn't dare do 11, 10, 20. At one point we did dare do that. So here's the thing, here's the thing. Knowing that English is very organic, richly human, which also makes it a very rich and beautiful subject in that sense, you could argue, I guess poets like English because of that, but it's awfully, awfully confusing. However, you can have fun with it. You can have fun with it. Let me go extra crazy. Let's try this one. I'm gonna go up to the thousands this time. Ones, tens, hundreds, thousands. I'm gonna have 12 of those, I have 12 thousands. I have 12 of these, I have 12 hundreds. I have 12 of these. 12 tens as well, and I have 12 ones. I can actually write that, that number out. It's going to be 12,000, 1,200, 12 tens, that's 12 T, 12. Okay, here's my first question. What is that number really? That's not acceptable in polite society, what I wrote on the, on the page there. If you had to fix that, that, uh, that number for, for people to understand and give you full credit for, what number is it? Mm -hmm. I've seen one, three, 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 two a couple of times. Yeah, if you think about it, think about it. Um, let's see, 10 of these, I didn't draw the dots, but 10 of those, no, no, no. Leave two behind, but make 10 of those be an extra dot there. Because 10 ones makes, a, makes 10. But you can't have 10 tens, not in polite society. Uh, leave three of these behind and take 10 of those tens and make an extra one there. So make it three tens, get that behind and make 10 of the tens become 100. But you can't have 10 hundreds because 10 hundreds is actually a thousand. Let's leave three of those behind Make an extra one of those, 10 hundreds of a thousand, and make that 13. You say, no, 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 you can't have 13,000. These three behind, 10 thousands make an extra one of these, one of those, which would be 10,000. You're right. The number is 13332. Three, three, All right, beautiful. By the way, this is really confusing about English. Let me say this out loud 12,212 to 12. Most of that sounds okay. People do say 12,000. We, we are actually allowed to say 12,000. 1,200. People do say 1,200. I need to buy that new fancy dupus TV. How much is it? It's $1,200. People actually say that. 12T, no, 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 no one says 12T. Don't be silly, James. We're not part of old English anymore. No one says 12T. And 12, we do say and 12. You hear that all the time. So actually, Three quarters this number is valid in what we say in everyday life. We say, no, 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 no one ever write 12, 12, 12, 12. You must write as 13,332. Very confusing for young kids. And even then, listen to me, 13,332 is what we say. 
you don't say one ten thousand, three thousand, three hundred thirty-two. You say no, no, no. You might write one ten thousand, three thousands, but you literally say thirteen thousand. This is all over the place. This is a nightmare. I have no idea how you teach place value to young children in English, because English is just all over the place. You're allowed to say 12,000, but you're not allowed to write it. In fact, when you do write it, you still have to say 13,000. What's the rule? It's totally, totally organically messy. Whoa, English is hard, English is weird. But here's the thing. If English is gonna be naughty and messy and all over the place, then we can use that to our advantage and make teaching maths much more fun and much easier. For example, let's use the weirdness to our advantage. I'm gonna to try to work out 358. I'll go up a few grades now and we'll do some long addition. Why not? Okay, okay. Clearly, I know what the answer is. I'm gonna draw a picture of it. I'll draw a place value chart of this. I'm gonna be slow. I'm asking for 300s and 5T, 510s and eight. And I'm being asked to add one more hundred. There it is. Add seven more tens, add 70. There they are, so there's seven more tens and add four more ones. Piece of cake, there's four more ones. How many do I have? Well, I have four hundreds, I can see them. How many uh, tens do I have? Uh, I see 12 of them. And how many ones do I have? I also see 12 of those. The answer is 412 to 12. Beautiful, correct, fabulous, love it. Do you know what? There is nothing mathematically wrong with that answer. I'm actually a professional mathematician. I've got my PhD in mathematics. I give this answer my stamp of approval. There's my stamp of approval. There's nothing mathematically wrong with the answer 412 to 12. The trouble is society doesn't like it. So here's my question to you. What would you like, what could we do to that answer that's not gonna be accept acceptable to society to fix it up and make it acceptable? What number is that really in disguise? It is like Tom Lehrer's song, yeah. Exactly, yeah, society insists you cannot have more than 10 dots in a place 10 of these will what, leave two behind, make an extra dot there. 10 of these, uh, it's now 13, will now leave three behind, oops, three behind, three behind, an extra dot there, and that makes five there. Yes, yeah, really 532 in disguise. There it is, 532. But I kind of love it. I kind of love it, because what I did, when I was a kid, I remember being taught to read left to right in every class except math class. We had to go right to left in math class, which I thought was strange. And you go, eight plus four is 12. I really wanted to write 12 as a kid. And I was taught, no, 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 James, you can't write 12 as a kid. You've got to write two and carry the one. That is, write two, I wanted to write 12, but then 10 of these dots actually become one of those. Oh, I'll add an extra dot there. Then you go, one plus five is seven. I wanted to write 13. Well, you can write 13, it's actually mathematically fine. There's nothing wrong with 13 tens, but society doesn't like it. So, oh, 10 of these will explode away. Oh, 10 of these explode away, leaving three behind, which is what you do write, and you make an extra dot there, just like I did. Make an extra dot there, and now I see you have five hundreds. So what I was actually taught in school is exactly what I did in the picture. So if I did it without a picture, and this is just mysterious, why do you go right to left? What's this like weird little ones? What are these, why can't I write 12? Why can't I write 13? But I would argue a lovely way to do this is do what's natural for our society. We read left to right, go left to right. Three plus one is four, five plus seven is 12. Just do the answers as they are. Bingo, I'm essentially done. Math is correct. The math is correct, 412 to 13. Now fix up to society. Do these little carries if you like. That's actually totally fine. Or regroups, whatever you want to call them, regrouping or carrying or explosions, what I like to call them, these dots explode away, become one dot, one place to the left, all is good and grand. In fact, very quickly, can you guys right now answer this one? One, two, five, four, plus uh, one, nine, nine, nine. Give me the James Tanton answer. My camera's frozen. Green. 
Oh, so, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, you're so patient with me. I appreciate that. All right, so what is the answer to two, four, six, seven times three? What's James Tatton's answer? Oh, let me open the chat again so I can see what you've been chatting about. Nice. Oh, yes. 6, 12, 18, 21. You guys are so in my brain space. Whoa, I love it. I love it. Okay, because here's what we're really doing. The task I was given was to take two thousands, four hundreds, six tens, and seven ones, and our task was to triple them. Please triple them. The most obvious answer is, oh, well, I've got two thousand, I must have tripled them. Make that six thousands. I'm just using my common sense. If I've got four hundreds and I must have tripled them, I guess it's twelve hundreds. I've got six tens and I must have tripled them, it's gonna make 18 tens. And if I make, got seven ones and I must have tripled them, it's gonna make me 21 ones. Great. All right. Next fun question. How do you say that answer out loud? You say it to yourselves out loud? That's the fun part. 6,1218T21. That would do it. 6,1218T21. Whoa, crazy. I bet that's crazy. It's mathematically solid. There's nothing wrong with it mathematically. But the question is, what do we need to do to fix it up for society? I bet society does not like that answer. So how do we fix up that answer for society's sake? What is that number really? What would you do? Oh yeah, you're typing it in. Oh wow, you typed it in. Whoa, you got it, 18T. That's what it would be, 18T and 10. All right, someone says it's 7,401 and someone's confirmed that. Yes, you're right. You're right. In fact, I'll be a little bit, a little bit, have some fun with it. Uh, ten of these tens would leave eight behind and make an extra one there. So I've really now got six thousand thirteen hundred eighty twenty-one. Um, I'm doing it in random order. Ten of these hundreds would explode away or regroup or carry, leave me three behind and an extra one there. So I've now got seven thousand three hundred eighty twenty-one. Oh, I guess 10 of these 10 ones and another 10 of these ones would leave one behind. Two regroupings makes an extra two there. So I guess the answer is 7,321. Oh, but you don't have 10 tens, James, don't be silly. Because 10 would regroup or carry or explode whatever your language is, leave none behind and make an extra one there. 7,401, I'm with you. I so see it too. Great, 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 you've got it. Or you could actually, I like to do this too. That's literally six thousands. Whoops, off the screen. That's literally twelve hundreds. That's literally uh, what was it? Eighteen tens, and that's literally twenty-one. You could add them up that way. All is good. All is grand. That flexibility of thought is very powerful. Thank you, English, for being quirky. If you're going to let me say twelve hundred in everyday life, I'm going to use twelve hundred in my making my math understanding easier. Oh, that reminds me. When I was in school. We were taught something very strange. This is probably year four or five for me. We were told to multiply a number by 10, to multiply a number by 10, just add zero. That's what I was taught. To multiply by 10, add zero. And I thought that was really, really strange because I thought, well, hang on, 243, if I add zero, doesn't that just keep you at 243? To which I went, huh? So what I was taught in school, I thought was weird. Now I know what they meant. I know they meant just tack a zero onto the end. And then I dutifully did that. I was a good student. I got all my gold stars in my worksheets, but here's the question. Why? Why does it work? Why do you end up just putting a zero in the end? What's going on? Can we figure out what's actually going on there? What's the true answer? Yeah, there's something to think about here. So I said, let's take, oh, did too many boxes, two hundreds, four tens, and three ones, and please multiply everything by 10. Yeah, you would literally get, oh, by tenfold two dots here, I'll get 20 dots there. By tenfold four tens, I'll get 40 tens. By tenfold three ones, I'll get 30 ones. So the answer is technically 20 hundred. 40 T 30. 
that you're right, you're right. Someone says scoot over because, oh, 10 of these is really one of those. And another 10 of these is really one of those. It's really two of those. 10 of these is really one of those. 10 of these is really one of those. Another 10 of these is really one of those. And another 10 of those is really one of those. It's really, you'll get four of these. And 10 of these are screwed over. 10 of these were screwed over. 10 of these were screwed over. It's really three of these. And I'm left with nothing behind. So you're right. It's not actually adding a zero on the end. It's all the individual digits actually screwed it over one place to, I would say, reveal a zero. I mean, that's a big word for, for a fourth grader, but, but we're really just revealing a zero. That's what's really going on. You're multiplying each place value by 10. I literally did that, 20, 30, 40, 30. And then I did all the regrouping or pairing or whatever you want. And in the, the end effect is, it looks like all the digits screwed it over one place to reveal a zero at the end. That now makes good sense to me. Okay, this is great. This is great. All right. Um, all right. Okay, let me do one more thing. Just this, this story can go so far. If, if English is going to be weird and we're willing to be weird in maths as well, maths makes good sense to me. Let me do something that's a little insulting to our intelligence. Let me draw this one. I know the answer is going to be what? Uh, 3906. But let me draw the actual picture of what that multiplication is. I'm saying I've got one 1,000. I've got three uh, hundreds and uh, no tens and two ones. And I'm being asked to triple everything, triple everything. Let me physically do that in a very tedious way. Okay, everything gets tripled. So this one dot here is gonna be tripled. One dot becomes three dots. This one dot up here is gonna be tripled. One dot becomes three dots. This one dot becomes tripled, okay, it becomes three. This one dot gets tripled, it becomes three. This dot becomes tripled, it becomes three. And this dot becomes tripled, it becomes three. And yes, I am seeing the answer, 3,900 and no tens and six. Beautiful. Now, now, Pretend you weren't watching just then, you didn't see that. Suppose I only gave you the answer. Uh, 3,906 looks like that. And I asked us to do the multiplication backwards. Let's undo the multiplication. Let's divide by three. Let me ask, what got tripled to give the answer 3,906? You can answer it this way. Oh, well, there's, a, there's three dots. There's one dot there got tripled to give me uh, three dots. And one dot here got tripled to give me three dots. This group of three is one dot that got tripled. And this group of three is one dot that got tripled. Uh, there's a group of three dots, that's one dot that got tripled. And here's another group of three dots, that's one dot that they got tripled. Oh, it must have been one dot in the thousands place, three dots in the hundreds place, no dots in the tens place, and two dots in the ones place that got tripled. Bingo, I just visually did a division problem. Whoa, whoa. Okay, we've only got two minutes left together, but on your own Z's, I know the answer is straightforward, but can you draw me a picture of 426 divided by two to reveal the answer 213? Can you actually do division like this on a piece of paper yourself? Let me literally draw four dots, two dots, and six dots, and see if you find what got doubled to make that picture. Are you seeing 213? I bet you are. You say, oh, this got doubled, that got doubled. Two things there got doubled. One thing there got doubled. And three things there got doubled. 213. Whoa. Um, okay, there is a little caveat with this one. Here's a little challenge. Let's make, let's make the standard curriculum all about the art of problem solving. I'm gonna give you a problem. Try that one. Draw me a picture. Of 412 divided by four. What got quadrupled to give the answer 412? This is the beautiful opportunity to teach the beautiful problem solving techniques that Deb was talking about earlier on, even at this level of mathematics. What got quadrupled to give this picture? Oops. Let me oh, two dots. James, 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 two dots. Yeah, so right now, I'm looking for groups of four. I'm looking for four dots, because that's what must have got quadrupled. One dot got turned into that. So there's a group of four dots. There's one dot there got quadrupled. 
And then right now, if I look at this, I say to myself, I don't see anything more. I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. I have a problem. Houston, we have a problem right now. And it's already come up in the chat. People had a flash of insight. If you're looking for groups of four dots, there's ways to get more, more dots in this picture because you realize that actually it's good sometimes to have more than 10 dots in a box. What if I took this one dot here and say, well, actually, it really came from 10 dots over here. Let me redraw those 10 dots over there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let me redraw those 10 dots over there because then I see more groups of four. I can say, oh, there's something that got quadrupled, and there's something that got quadrupled, and there's something that got quadrupled. Three things there got quadrupled. And voila, I'm suddenly seeing one there, none there, and three there got quadrupled. The answer has to be 103. Whoa, whoa. If, if English could be quirky and human, let's be quirky and human in maths as well. And even with this simple arithmetic that we're at here, there's a beautiful opportunity to teach the confidence for problem solving. We have a stuck with a problem and all will be good. What is a remainder? Someone quickly ask a remainder. Then let's see if we see remainders. Can everyone for me right now do 413 divided by four? What's going to happen if there's a remainder? And we'll end off there because my time is up. Will you see remainders? And I think the answer is literally yes. You will literally see remainders. <sighs> Ran out of fours. Oh, do this. Unexplode. Seven, eight, nine, ten. <gasps> four, four, four. I've got one dot left over. One dot left over. I would literally see it. The answer I had before, 103 with one dot remaining, remainder one. All right, on that note, my time is truly up. I'm going to say thanks for all for having me on board today. Hopefully this was interesting, helpful, and just a way to think about. All levels of mathematics have beautiful opportunity to teach the fabulous life skill of agile thinking and being confident in your common sense and wits and beautiful brain that each and every one of us has. What a great opportunity to teach our students the confidence to rely on their fabulous brains. So thank you so much, everyone, a real honor.